Hey, let me ask you, can your board do this? This is what we're working with. A plank skateboard that can stand up and lay on its side. It's what I use instead of a bike. Let me ask you, have you ever thought about how much a skateboard vibrates when riding? Have you ever tried putting electronics on one? Let me show you what it took to add this slick underglow to my skateboard. This is the setup. The black box will be near the trucks, the safest place on the board. Two lead strips will sit on either side of the board. I don't remember where this box comes from, but it does the job. There are slots for four batteries, but we will only be using three of them. The last slot, this one, will have the main board and the microcontroller. That's correct. The board won't be just batteries and some lights, but it will be possible to program each LED light individually with this tiny little computer. But there is a reason for this, which I'll talk about later. Before I continue though, there's one thing I want to cover regarding wheel bite and why it isn't a problem. I can take 90 degree turns with no problems. Even with sharper turns, where I put a lot of weight on the board, really leaning into the curve, it's not even close. If I show this in another angle, it should be pretty safe to assume it won't bite even at the sharpest of turns. With that said, let's talk about the brain of the board. On this board we have the processor, a reset button and some programming pins. We cut it to be this small and then it fits perfectly into the fourth battery slot. This box isn't good enough to hold all the batteries in place when riding, so we will be tying them to the case like this. To get this we drilled some holes and tied it up a bit. Then to add the batteries. And to fasten them. Perfect. A problem with this case is that the on off switch sits on the back side, the side which will be stuck to the board. We do a bit of trolling and it's no longer a problem. PC fan cables. Yep, it's the splitter we're using. Unfortunately, we didn't notice that there is only one yellow cable, so my friend took another cable and just jammed it into the splitter. And this is the result. I think it ended up so, so good. This is the test fit. One of the lead strips will go through the trucks. Because my board is a bit jank, there is no bolt where the cables come out of the case. To get everything to stick to the board, we'll be using double-sided tape. The tape also happens to be just a little bit wider than the lead strips, which is perfect. The casing just has a lot more tape on it. Spoilers, the velcro was too thick, so the case ended up falling off. I didn't record this, but I put two more layers of tape over the velcro and now it's not falling off anymore.
it seems like we have another guest in the video. So here's how it turned out. Epic. Quick notes, we had some issues. Some connectors were loose in one of the LED strip, so we soldered it stuck. Because of the vibrations when rioting, the batteries probably lost connection. We tensioned the springs in the case by putting in some aluminum foil into them. A real hack, yeah. It did look cool when riding though, causing this flaming effect. I mentioned earlier why we opted to use a microcontroller instead of LED lights with an on-off switch. The reason is that this project is actually only a prototype board. My board a week ago was called Plonk V2, and this is Plonk V2B. Thanks for watching all the way through. Remember to like. It's been a pretty epic project, and I'm so happy with the results. Much better than expected. Thanks to my friend Eric for doing all the electrical wiring. Here, enjoy some more footage of me riding during the night, and also falling off the board. Cheers! <laughs>